All right, we are rolling. All right, well, I'm Richard Boyd. I'm the director of Lockheed Martin's Virtual World Labs. Uh, I've been with the company about four years, and I'm focused on our healthcare simulation effort. Um, when most people hear of Lockheed showing up at a healthcare conference like this, they're a little puzzled. And so usually I try to deal with that right up front. Um, but most people, I, I think, might be surprised to find out that Lockheed has been involved in healthcare IT for, I think, now 20 years and actually have about a half billion dollar, pretty robust uh, business in that area. But I think, you know, maybe it was a few years ago when all of us in this country became really concerned about uh, health care, the escalating cost of health care and the economic impact of that and national security impact of that. Of course, that, that caught our attention. And we pulled together a group of folks and I call it sort of cross-pollinated, you know, our healthcare IT group with the aerospace folks. And, you know, by, by putting those pieces together, found some new capabilities that, that we think people in this community will find quite surprising. Um, you know, essentially in, in aviation, we have uh, uh, basically engineered human error completely out of that system. I don't know how many people know that. Uh, you know, in the last year, uh, over 700 million people boarded, I think, 10 million flights. Don't, don't check my math too closely on that. Um, and we had zero fatalities. And it's not because that's not a complex undertaking, it really is. But by using things like checklists and uh, safety interlocks and prognostics and simulation and, and system of systems engineering, we've basically taken these humans uh, who are in very complex environments and engineered, uh, you know, error out of the system. And we believe that there, we have very good reason to believe we can do some of the same things for healthcare. Does that really kind of sum up exactly what you want people to know here and just in general, that it is possible to engineer safety right into the healthcare system? Because I think a lot of people expect there to be mistakes. It's kind of, you know, part of the equation. And this is not necessarily the case. Yeah, I think that expectation of, of mistakes is something that, you know, we're very comfortable with in the auto industry, for, for example, and I think that's actually going to change pretty soon now that we have cars that drive by themselves, but that's a completely different subject uh, with robotic cars and that sort of thing. And, you know, when we went from, from uh, propeller planes to jet planes, we had that same issue, you know, that the tempo increased and we, we uh, very quickly found that the speed of decision making and, you know, when you start... Uh, providing a lot of sensor systems around a human in, in these increasingly complex environments. The error rate increased. We started, we started seeing, you know, dramatic uh, uh, impacts in, in terms of death and accidents, that sort of thing. So we brought all these very basic technologies to bear and it perfected them over time. And it's proven, again, to give, provide the outcomes we're talking about, where we actually have uh, engineered human error out of the system. Can you talk a little bit about what you see in the future short term and then maybe longer down the road. Sure. So there's some, some really interesting things happening right now. There's a complete, you know, revolution in artificial intelligence today. We have an, uh, a revolution in sensors. They're getting incredibly cheap and, and ubiquitous. Uh, there's a revolution in even simulation technologies in the gaming industry and movie industry and, of course, uh, in our industry. When you put all that together, we have this new opportunity to change the whole human relationship with technology. And these new, and, and what this enables are, are new interfaces, new ways to uh, uh, interact with what I call automation. And automation to me is artificial intelligence and, and uh, decision-making systems and data storage facilities and, and search mechanisms, all that stuff I, I'm just going to call, you know, automation. And I think the critical problem of this century, and it's not just healthcare, is to attain, somehow achieve a comfortable balance between humans and automation to optimize outcomes. And there's, I've never seen a more disruptable or ready market than healthcare to bring those capabilities uh, into the market and make some dramatic changes. What do you see 20 years from now? Wow, 20, that's a, it's hard to see 20 years out because that's past the singularity. You know, that point <laughs> at which uh, machines exceed human intelligence, we have no idea what happens after that. So, so let's back it up a little bit and, and say, you know, 10 to 15 years, I really think that, um, you know, up, up till now in the information age, we've spent all of our time kind of adapting to technology, learning how to work with it on its terms. You know, Marshall McLuhan once talked about uh, the fact that the things we make, make us. I know that's now a Jeep commercial or something, but he's, I think he said it first. 
Um, but that's true all the way back to the first cave drawings. The minute we started creating things in the physical world, it's, it kind of remaps the brain and, and changes how we, uh, how we think about the world. And uh, in the information age so far, the things we've made have caused us to, uh, or basically we're adapting to the things we've made. Um, and what's happening now with the, this revolution and all this automation that I've been talking about is that now these things we've made, that we've been making, are beginning to serve us. Um, and that means that the interface is becoming more ambient. Um, things like Star Trek, you know, for those who are Star Trek fans. You know, being able to walk into a room and say, hey, computer, on, here's what I want, and have the, have the thing do your bidding while you focus on the task at hand. And I, I think that sort of uh, ambient usability, um, uh, you know, uh, large uh, bits of data that are transparent to inquiry, that is the, will be the hallmark of the second stage of the information age. Sounds exciting. Beautiful. Yeah. That was